Welcome. Is the United States getting warmer? NOAA just released its April 2015 climate report for the United States. There's some interesting things to look at here. Temperatures were about 2 degrees Fahrenheit above the 20th century average. The southeast suffered its warmest April on record. The drought area expanded to over a third of the country despite above average rainfall. The northern tier states and west remained dry. Now let's take a look at these points individually. First of all we'll start with temperatures. If you look at temperature extremes, 16 cities in the west set record highs while only 6 cities in the east set record lows. If you look at the individual station records you get a very similar picture. For daily records we had 1700 high records set with only 1100 lows. The monthly records which are much more difficult to set we had 68 highs compared with 16 lows. That's a ratio of 4 to 1. And all time records we had 2 highs and 0 lows. This points to an overall warming pattern across the United States. Florida set a new record for heat. Here is the maximum daily temperature shown across the United States and you can see that Florida although its temperature was much above average it's nothing special no records were set. So what's all this about? Well that's the daily maximum temperature. Let's take a look at the daily minimum temperature. You can see that all of Florida, southern Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi and Louisiana all set record warmest nights. Now this is a unique signature of greenhouse gases. The sun warms the land during the day and when the sun sets that heat is radiated back out into space. If there's an excess of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that heat cannot escape and so the land remains warmer than it would otherwise. Let's take a look at the drought situation. If for the period from January to April uh, the northern tier states remained very dry as it did the west. In fact two of the northern tier states set all-time record driest periods. You notice there was no record wet periods. However Texas had much above average rainfall which it badly needed but that is continuing now and we could start getting floods there fairly soon. There's an interesting index called the Climate Extremes Index. It needs a little bit of explaining because it's a little complicated. It's the percentage of the country that is suffering from extreme maximum or extreme minimum temperatures, extreme rainfall or drought, extreme one day rainfall events. Now I'm not quite sure why but that is multiplied by a factor of two. The area of the country that has extended droughts or rain events and something that's newly being introduced which is the impact from tropical storms. Now if you follow this index over the last 50 years you see it's been steadily increasing over that time. This uh, black dotted line here is a least squares fit to the data. There have been some science items in the news which I would like to share with you. The first one is fairly depressing that the US has now slipped to 28th place in maths and science education. The list was topped by five Asian countries Singapore, Hong Kong, South Korea, Japan and Taiwan. The US was overtaken by Vietnam which is now in 12th place. The US now lags most Western European countries with one notable exception which is Sweden which used to be one of the highest ranked countries in Europe has now slipped to 35th place. Now from these high performing countries and the Swedish experience perhaps we can distill some of the successful strategies in education and some of the unsuccessful strategies. What do the successful countries have in common? Well they have highly educated and well paid teachers. They've invested a lot of money in making sure their school facilities are very good. They have a rigorous curriculum set by experts. They have longer and more school days and the parents have high expectations of their kids to the extent that if their kids are not doing well in school they'll enroll them in uh, external tuition classes. So what has Sweden been doing that's making it slip down the table so rapidly? There are lots of opinions here as to why Sweden has been doing so badly. I've included all of them from both sides of the political spectrum. One, the schools are going through a process of being privatized. So corporations are now responsible for the education of the kids, but they're also responsible to their shareholders for make maximum profits. Those profits uh, are in contradiction to the ability to educate. They will try to pay teachers less, they will have larger classes, uh, they will invest less in the infrastructure of the school in order to maximize their profits. 
They've also introduced a voucher system, so parents can take money from the uh, public schools and invest them in these private schools or religious schools. Students, parents and politicians are having too much say in what the curriculum is included. And now my biggest bugaboo with all of this is they've introduced lots and lots of tests as metrics to how well those teachers are doing. So the teachers are now teaching to the tests rather than uh, the tests being a metric of how well the school kids are understanding the uh, subject matter. This is true of all of the, the subjects, not just science and math. We have the return of El Nino. The Equatorial Pacific Ocean has warmed. You can see here there is uh, red and orange areas all along the equator. That's El Nino. California is beginning to get some late season rain and snows, though I doubt that it will have very much impact on the drought. And the models now forecast a strong and long-lasting El Nino event. I'm forecasting 2015 will be the warmest year on record. But the question is how much? I don't think this is going to be a marginal event. I think this is going to shatter previous records. But you will notice in this plot there's lots of ups and downs. That's noise. And that makes it difficult to interpret the data. So um, what causes that noise? Well, El Nino does. That creates some of the high spikes. La Nina creates some of the low points. And volcanic eruptions also cool the um, climate for a period of a year or two. So what happens if you take all of those effects out? Here I've done just that. I've taken out the strong El Nino years, I've taken out the strong La Nina years, and I've also taken out the major volcanic eruptions. Now there's fewer points available to make the plot, but you will notice that the slope of the plot is identical to all of the data, 1.6 degrees centigrade per century. That indicates that the warming is continuing no matter whether there's a short-term or long-term warming trend. And if you do it just for the last 10 years, you see that the trend is also very similar between the two of them. It's 1.3 instead of 1.6. So the warming has slowed a little, but not very much. If this was a no warming situation, that number would be zero. If, that, if it was a cooling situation, that number would be negative. Now you might remember last week, I was going on about the US military complaining about a Chinese satellite that was blown up as a, by an anti-satellite weapon and creating lots of space debris. Unfortunately for the Pentagon, uh, one of its satellites, DMSP-17, exploded in February and the Pentagon rushed in to assure us that in spite of the fact that it uh, produced over 50,000 new pieces of space junk, the Chinese experiment only produced 3,000, it will pose no effect to uh, any of the satellites. Now a new study from the University of Southampton now contradicts that assertion and in fact many satellites will be in danger, particularly those with what they call sun-synchronous orbits, those are the ones that go over the poles, measuring things like ice extent and such like. I've got bad news for allergy sufferers. There is an alert issued by NOAA that we have a very bad allergy season ahead of us, possibly worst in years, uh, what was quoted by one of the researchers as a tsunami of pollen. What caused this? Well the harsh winter, the delayed spring, has caused many of the plants, both the spring and the summer plants, to produce their pollen at the same time. So we're getting very high concentrations of pollen in the atmosphere. Well, the thing to take away from this is that you should ignore the naysayers. Anthropogenic global warming is a real and urgent problem, and the US is not immune to its effects. Next week, NOAA will be issuing its uh, global climate report for April, and I will put out a, another video associated with that.